Okay, so today we're actually going to use a new data set that was just released by the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Police Department that lists uh, part one crime incidents uh, for the City of Philadelphia from January 1st, 2006 until the present. Um, it's actually updated um, every morning, so every each, each day you've got a, a new data set that's complete and up to date. Uh, part one crimes are major crimes like murder, rape, um, assault with a deadly weapon, theft, things like that. Everything else is a part two crime. So we're going to actually create a visualization with this data. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to download our data. It'll take a few moments because it is a, a large data set, probably close to 600,000 records. Um, so once this uh, finishes downloading, then we'll uh, We'll compress it. And once that process is done, uh, we've got a few files here. We've got the actual uh, CSV file um, that, that contains all of the crime incidents. Uh, we've got a file called um, update underscore date, which actually has the uh, uh, the actual date that the uh, Data set was last updated, which was this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, got some metadata actually describing what this data is, um, and uh, that's about it. So let's actually take a quick look at the metadata. Um, you can see we've got several fields uh, of importance. Um, most importantly, we've got the uh, latitude and longitude of the crime incident. Um, we've got the um, a description of what it was uh, and actually when it happened. So what that's going to let us do, it's going to let us actually create a temporal visual visualization of this data. So actually we'll display incidents uh, running through a time series basically. And we're going to use um, a really cool tool from CartoDB called Torque to do that. But the first thing I need to do, I actually need to get this data. Uh, let's take a look at it actually. Uh, let's just see what it looks like. You can see it's just a standard common delimited file. Um, we're going to load this up into CartoDB. One of the things that CartoDB will do for you is actually set up, um, uh, make it easier for you to do um, to, to map your data and to set up uh, geographic queries. It looks for, uh, the easiest way I've found to do that is to actually um, include a column in your data for um, longitude and latitude. In this case, the data set uses point underscore x and point underscore y. We can see in the metadata that point x is longitude and point y is latitude. Oops. We can actually change that. What we're going to do here is just take the first line of that file. We're going to pass it into sed and we're going to exchange point x is the longitude. And point Y is the latitude. I think I've got that right. <clears throat> this would help if I actually typed this properly. Let's just see what that looks like. Whoops. Yeah, so what that does is it actually gives us the first line of the file, and you can see it changes um, the, the column headers to the ones we want, longitude and latitude. So let's take that, and we're just going to stick that into a file called crimes, CSV. Right. So now what we want to do, what I want to do in this instance is I want to go through um, each of the roughly 600,000 some odd records in this file, and I want to single out the ones that are homicides. And you can see that there's actually a description in each of the records that tells you what kind of a crime it is. So I'm going to do something very similar to what I just did. I'm going to just output the contents of the file and I'm going to pass it into grep and look for the word homicide. And if I get a line that is homicide, what I'll do is I will then append my crimes CSV file. Uh, you know what, before we do that, let's just test it out here. 
this should work. I'll just do a quick count, see how many I get. So there's 3,084 um, lines in that file with homicide, so that's good. That gives me some confidence that my command is going to work here. And we'll just append them into that. Okay, so now when I look at my newly created CSV file. It just has homicides in it. You can see I've got uh, the right column names, longitude and latitude, and it looks like it's just homicides. And just to check, roughly, we've got the right number of records. Yeah, looks good. So now that we've got our file, um, just a CSV file now with only homicides, starting in January 2006 up until uh, this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, what I want to do is I actually want to bring those into CartoDB, and what I've done, I've done that. You can upload a CSV file quite easily. The one thing we're going to want to do to use Torque to um, to do this visualization is we're going to want to make sure that the the dispatch underscore date underscore time uh, column is actually a date. Um, you need to change the, 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 the type to a date. It's actually a string in the CSV file, and CartoDB does that really easily. Uh, you just select um, um, the data type that you want, and we'll do that conversion for you. You don't even have to write any SQL, which is really, really nice. So the way that um, Torque works is, and if you go to um, the CartoDB GitHub um, um, account, I'll put that in the uh, blog post that this will accompany, um, what you'll see is some samples um, that use Torque and these temporal data sets. And it's really, really easy to set it up to use this data. Um, essentially, all I've done is actually change the particulars of the Google map to center down Philadelphia. Um, I've changed the zoom level a bit because some of their examples were countrywide. I want this to cover a, um, a city. Um, and then really all I've done is change the actual Torque options. I've told it the um, my username on CartoDB and the name of the table, and then this dispatch underscore date time is the column I just mentioned to you. It has to be a, um, a PostgreSQL uh, date column, and if it is, then CartoDB Carto or the uh, the Torque um, tool that I'm going to show you right now will work quite well. And when we do all that, what we end up with is something like this. Let me just refresh to give you a sense of how it works. So what it's going to do is going to fetch all those crimes, and it's going to actually um, place them on the map based on the time that they occur. And you can see in the lower right, it's going to it's going to um, increment by month, starting in January 2006, and then it will end in December 2012. And it'll pause for a moment, and then it will start over again. Pretty neat. Um, it's actually an interesting visualization. It's 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 a bit depressing um, because there are quite a few uh, homicides that occur, and you can see some of the some of the darker yellows are actually multiple homicides that are spaced really, really closely together, and you don't get that until you zoom in. But what this lets us do, it, it shows that we can create powerful visualizations simply and easily with the tools that are available, as long as we have the data. And um, that's something that the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Police Department are committed to providing, so that we can we can display the magnitude of the problems that we're facing and uh, hopefully uh, get people excited about um, coming up with some solutions.